Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. I am Adam. Um, well, the new releases this week were not a great selection based on reviews going into it. Um, it was uh, Shaft, The Dead Don't Die, or Men in Black International. And I decided on Men in Black International, as you know if you've read the title of this before listening to it. Um, so that's what we're here to talk about, Men in Black International. Um, now, I know what M- uh, Men in Black is. Uh, I've seen one movie out of the three preceding this one. I saw Men in Black 2 with, uh, what's it called, uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Um, for context, I watched it on a coach bus on the way to a field trip to Great Adventure in the 11th grade. So that would have been 2011, so almost 10 years ago um, was the last time I saw this movie. Um, do I remember anything from the movie? Was that the fact that Will Smith was in it? No. It was also... The next movie that we watched after was Hitch, so, you know, we, we didn't have the best decision-making going on um, in this situation. So, let's just uh, take a look at what Men in Black International. Um, I don't think the Men in Black franchise has been that great to begin with. If it, like, It's not like the series was ever fantastic. The first movie was kind of groundbreaking, if I remember correctly, granted. I've never seen the first movie. I bought it, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, I bought it used at FYE. Um, so, you know, keep in mind that all I know about Men in Black is what I've seen today, functionally, which is how a, a, a soft reboot should be. And it is a soft reboot because there is a a reference to Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith in the movie. So it's a soft reboot in that you don't have to have seen the previous movies. They're not... This isn't Men in Black 4, Um because there was a Men in Black 3, and, you know, a lot of people forgot about that. Um, but here's the thing about this franchise. it They do it on the really cheap, and it kind of shows in the effects. The effects aren't fantastic, but some of, some of them are pretty good. Like, and, like in this one, there are the star guys uh, whose alien race name I can't remember off the top of my head, but they look like they're made out of stardust, um, and they look like they're made... They, they're just pure cosmic energy, and they can turn... They can change states of matter, and they're really cool, and anything having to do with them is really cool. Um, that said, I am I was under the impression that these movies were supposed to be like a comedy. Um, I've never gone to a movie and laughed less. Like, n- none of the jokes landed. And it's not, it wasn't just me not liking the jokes. It was about... It it wasn't it wasn't Endgame full. It wasn't um it wasn't even Dark Phoenix full. It was like um Shazam full. Um Shazam at the preview showing full. Um which is to say not that full. Um like a quarter. Uh no one laughed at anything through this entire movie. Um so it wasn't just me. Now, I think that the bigger problem with this movie is that like, that's a problem. The jokes don't land. Um, the action isn't great. There's a lot of weird cuts and, you know, choppy editing. Um, the sound editing isn't great. The only thing that's good about this movie is um, Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth's chemistry as Agent M and A- um, Agent H. Um... And quite honestly, it's like we we've seen them interact before, and they always have great chemistry. They always get along great um, on screen together. Um, so I, that's the only thing worth seeing. Is that worth seeing? Full price opening weekend um, for eighteen ninety nine in IMAX. I maintain no. Is it worth seeing that opening weekend when you can still see Endgame in theaters, or you can see Detective Pikachu, or you can see even Dark Phoenix? I mean. And the sad thing is, the amount of the runtime of this movie it gave me hope because I I want to see more of these short movies that aren't like three days long. Like Detective Pikachu was a shorter movie. This is a shorter movie because I went in for a seven o'clock showing. I was out of the theater by nine, and that's with about ten fifteen minutes of uh, of trailers before it. Um. So I, I they gave me hope that you know 
It just you gotta get the quality nailed down with these shorter movies. Like Detective Pikachu was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, and th- this movie has a similar problem. It's just it's not even okay. It's like the the twist is so predictable, and they try to throw you off. Like the twist is that uh, uh, Liam Neeson's the bad guy, but you can tell. Like, the entire way through the movie, from the beginning, you can tell Liam Neeson's the bad guy. Um, and they don't do a good job of really hiding it. Um, unless maybe you're, like, five. Um, so, yeah. Um, maybe wait for this to be, like, a $5 Tuesday matinee. Uh, maybe, you know, if you have a senior discount, use it for this. If you have a free movie ticket from something, this might be the one to use it on. This isn't something that I would rush out to see. And the thing is, I never say that. Like, I saw the the Hummingbird Project, and I was like, yeah, it's still got its merits. This movie, I, I, I... This is the first movie I've seen in a very long time. I would say since Fantastic Four in 2015. This is the first movie I've seen in a very long time that I can honestly say, without a doubt, I see no purpose in seeing this movie opening weekend, or even seeing it in theater at all. It's not like waiting for it to come out on DVD, or waiting for it to come out even on cable, when they run it inevitably on HBO, or on Stars or some bullshit. There's not going to be... There's no gain seeing this movie in theaters. Um that you need to see right now. It, it, it's... It, like, even... Like, the... The core cat... Like, even Kumail Nanjiani, and he's... I, I do really like him. He's a really good actor. He's kind of reduced down to one-liners, and it's just kind of, like... What's the point of him being there? Like, it, it's watered down. It's... I don't even want to say watered down. It's not like it was rated R originally, and they had to make PG-13, and it just feels weird, like when they made um, Live Free or Die Hard, where it was hard R, hard R, and then PG-13. And he couldn't even say yippee ki motherfucker. Um, but yeah, I think that this is... This is a franchise that's going to keep going on because they can make these movies for under $100 million and then the international markets always make back the money for it. Um, so, you know, they're going to keep making them. They're just going to keep telling stories of other agents, which is cool. Um, a Men in Black, like, TV show for Netflix would be cool. A Men in Black, like... You know, there's all sorts of things you can do with this franchise. I don't see why theatrical movies is necessarily the way to go. Um, And with that, we'll wrap up for today. Uh, I am going to see Shaft early next week. Um, And that'll be, you know, the next one. And then I don't know what drops next week. I think Toy Story 4 comes out next week. So, uh, strap yourselves in for that. And we can get ready for Toy Story 4. And until then, have a great rest of your week.